sofa6.co.uk sponsors of the haze hour yay whoop whoop <laughs> it's uh, what <laughs> it's thursday night it's nine o'clock um which means it should be the haze hour tonight it's a tri no it's not a tripartite it's a dipartite show it's me and keith but the old days, isn't it? It is. Pre Dars, because Dars poo alarm. He's poorly bad in bed with a shawl on, both feet in one sock, waiting for the doctor to come and rub his chest with it. He's been to the dentist, apparently, has Dars. Oh? Aye. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes. What a coincidence. It is a bit. He's had that thing where they get the doodar out and shove it between your teeth and vibrate it. No, Lesliana Lawless, not that one. Um. Yeah, he's, he's had all the, the gunk and everything taken off and he reckons he needs repointing now. Because <laughs> he's got, yes, it's all, you know, it's uh, I, one of those jobs. So Daz has been getting the teeth pulled. Now, before we go any further into it and play the titles, I'm going to apologise for the voice. I'm a little bit croaky. Have you noticed? Yes, your mouth's not opening the way it would normally open. I That's mean, what Jill I, said earlier, yes. I, I, I think you're very brave after having undergone surgery like that to be to be with us tonight. No, I wouldn't say that. I honestly thought I was going to have to front this and I had a, a sense of dread. Did you? I did. Oh, well, you've yes. done it before. Well, I, I mean, I just don't have your, your style, you see. Oh, with so, that hat on, you can't say no, that. I, I mean, you really need to try tonight and, and rest your mouth as much as you can. That's what I've been telling Jill all week, yes. I second that. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, before we play the titles in, and I, I, I'm, I'm going to land the pair of them into it. I had a Skype conversation earlier on with Kat, Chris, and for the first time in the donkey's age, Jill was in the room, and I had thought... This was post the tooth being yanked. I had thought there might have been just just a glimmer of sympathy. I really did. I'm telling you now, Goebbels got more sympathy than I got off those two this afternoon. The pair of them were cackling away like a pair of hens that had just laid a clutch of eggs. You've heard nothing like it. Sympathy, my backside. Shall we do but the show? But you've had my sympathy. Oh, no, Keith. Put yes, it there, mate. Put yes, it there. No, I'm into, yeah. I'm into the AC. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, right. Yes, that, that's oh, I thought I'd get me over again. It would have been, wouldn't it? Shall we, shall we talk we'll about these things and yes, do the show? I think so. We'll play the tape. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it is lovely to be with you tonight. This is a show called One, Two, Three, The, the Here's, Here's Hour. Hour. There you go. I've just had a little boogie to the title music. I love that music. You don't like it, do you? No. Hate it. Yeah. That I, music. I've discovered many things over the last couple of days that uh, I think are worthy of... Um, not hate is the wrong word, but uh, derision, maybe. Right. You know, derision. Talk, yeah, derision. Now, if, you, if you're on Twitter, and, and a great many of you are, um, and by the way, I keep saying this, if you're not... You should be. You find out stuff so quick. It's it honestly it is it's quicker than chat, and chat's quick enough. I'm sorry, I'm doing it again. You, we've put chat up, isn't, haven't we? Uh, Clive yeah. says asked what music it is. I'll, it's in the credits at the end. Um, it hasn't a name, fortunately. It has. Has it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a proper. Song. I could think of one. But it's called Wheels on Wheels of Terror. Is the name of the the thing. 
Terror yes. is appropriate. Terror is amazingly appropriate. Now, uh, as I said, yeah. voice is not so grand, so can I try and ease into these gently? And I've got a really long piece of video to play with you. As I was saying, if you're on Twitter, and if you're not, you should be, you'd have spied it being squirted all over the place during, well, since yesterday, that Anna Soubry, the uh, junior minister for health, who has been apparently guiding the tobacco products directive through the Council of Ministers um, in the EU Parliament, was taken to task yesterday by the um, the European Parliament Oversight Committee, the, the, the committee that actually looks at stuff and decides what, you know, with what's happening in Europe, what actually needs to be debated at length in Parliament. Yes. Right? The Scrutiny Committee is where it's called. And, well, I, I think I might just let the chairman of the Scrutiny Committee take it up, sit back, charge your e-cig with some 45 or 36, and just listen to this. I, I'm, I'm making no apologies for the length of it. I think everybody needs to hear just how accountable some of our members of parliament and ministers think they are. I've annotated one or two bits and just see what she thinks is happening with e-cigs in Europe. Enjoy. Uh, Minister, thank you very much uh, for responding so quickly to our request to give evidence, and we understand you have to leave by 2.45. But before we begin, I would like to remind you that the draft directive remains under scrutiny, and that the committee does intend to recommend a debate. Indeed, we probably would have done so already if the government had been in a position to provide the information we requested in our first report on the subject sooner. The purpose of today's session is to deal specifically with your decision to override scrutiny by agreeing a general approach on the draft directive on tobacco and related products at the Health Council on the 21st of June. Let me say at the outset that we take a decision to override scrutiny very seriously indeed, especially when it concerns a proposal of such importance. You will be aware from the reports we have produced that we consider that insufficient information was made available to the Committee to enable it to scrutinise the Commission's proposal and, more importantly, the Government's position before the general approach was agreed on the 21st of June. Now, negotiations on the draft directive appear to have proceeded at unwarranted haste given its far-reaching implications for the internal market and for public health. Why was it necessary to proceed so quickly? And what assurances can you give to us that you were able to consult UK stakeholders on the implications of the draft directive and the government's negotiating position in the short time available? Well, thank you very much indeed, and obviously it was um, of concern to myself that we were in the position that we were in. Uh, we had, of course, um, notified uh, both this committee and indeed the House of Lords uh, Scrutiny Committee asking for scrutiny waivers, and I think it is of some importance, I hope you would agree, that a waiver was received from the Lords Committee, but of course not, Mr Cash, from your committee. Uh, and. Um, your reason was that there was a lack of time to consider in full the government's position on the directive um, and that was the primary reason for not granting the waiver. Um, and, and I'll sort of cut to the chase and tell you the position that we are in. Events were moving pretty fast uh, and when we got over to Luxembourg we knew that this directive was going to be debated uh, and of course we are obviously aware of the government's policy um, in relation to tobacco. Uh, and, of course, we were in a position where the government had not yet had not made a public decision or announcement on whether or not it was going to proceed um, with the um, what is called standardised packaging of cigarettes, which I hope you are familiar with. Um, and that, none of that had been put into the public arena, and indeed there had, it was in the process of a write-out to all the various parts of government that these things have to go through. So when we got to Luxembourg, we knew that events had moved quite swiftly among the various people that were attending uh, as to the final directive. And we know, we also knew, that 
things were going to be very, very tight when it came to the vote. We knew who was in favour broadly of certain parts of the directive, who was opposed to other parts, all those things as you might imagine. But there was one particular feature of the directive that concerned all of us. It was in relation to Article 24. And we felt it was extremely important that we play a full role to ensure, frankly, that, the, that this, our government, and any government of whatever colour, was able to retain powers to determine its own future policy on tobacco. The position we were in was if we didn't play a full part and we didn't take part in a vote, and as you can imagine there were numerous negotiations involved with other member states, the grave danger was that either the whole directive would be lost, and we didn't think that that was right, it didn't, con it didn't concur with government policy, or we would be in a position whereby we would find ourselves, frankly, as a nation, unable, if we so chose, to introduce standardised packaging or other measures that went beyond the European directive. So that was why, given the situation which we faced, uh, the decision was made uh, as I've explained. So I apologise profusely. I wish it had been other, uh, uh, because I believe in, in, in as much as one ever can in doing all the things that you should do. But we were in a position whereby we, I certainly took the view we had no option and it would, have been, it would have been wrong to lose the directive and even worse for us to find ourselves in a position where we were unable to determine our own policy on tobacco. Supplementary. Minister, use the phrase lose the directive as if directives only have one life and suddenly can be killed off. If that was the case, I think when I was here would applaud a number of directives that could have been killed off at whim. But the reality is they are never killed off. You don't lose the directive. They might in fact slip out of the, the badge that the Irish presidents can wear because they want to get it through in their presidency. But it doesn't go away because you take the trouble to respect Parliament and consult Parliament. It will still be there after we have consulted. With respect what do you mean by lose the directive? Well, I'll explain. You get a chance to do it in your term of office. On oh, mine? Yes. Not. Sorry. Forgive me. Well, what, what, what uh, do do forgive me, Mr. Connolly. Do forgive me. Uh, it's not my term of office at all. Um, I, I, I can assure you uh, that I don't uh, seek some personal legacy. Well, Any, uh, let me, if you would be so good as to let me finish. Well, I, let I like me, an explanation. If you, I will give you an explanation, but please don't personalise this. Uh, I have not, not come to this place for some third career, I can assure you. Uh, I have come to this but place... But the Irish presidents were seeking to do it in their presidency, so oh, they well, could say they did it in their That presidency. is perhaps another matter, but uh, let, let me try and answer your question. First of all, of course, we did have, um, we did have the waiver from the House of Lords. It is unfortunate I accept that <coughs> this committee felt that it needed more time, and I, 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 I understand that. that w we wanted a directive on tobacco, uh, and I think it's fair to say that the majority of, mem of the member states, we all agreed it was right to have a directive on tobacco. Uh, whether or not the Irish saw it as some badge of honour for them, I can't comment. Um, I frankly have found the Irish Health Minister's attitude um, towards these matters quite refreshing, and I think um, many of the discussions that we've had at our meetings have been extremely good and very helpful. Um, but we wanted to come to a conclusion and a decision, and I think that was only right and fair. And you say, well, it come back, but I mean, we could all go on like that. But I think it was the Article 24 point, which, if I may say, I think is the most important. We felt it was very important that we should protect our position as a, as a government um, so that we could, if we had so chosen to do, make a decision as to whether or not to go forward with standardised packaging. And, and that was absolutely the view that we all took, absolutely. And, and forgive me, but if you go back and you look at what I said um, and what I had said the British government was prepared to accept and not accept, absolutely at the front of all that was this point on Article 24. But, but you therefore thought it was more important than to, in fact, consult Parliament, which is your duty, which this committee has set up but, to be consulted. Mr. Conte, we did we consult you. We did consult you, but, but, but you but felt you, you needed more time. Correct. But we, we did consult you. Uh, and the committee in the House of Lords, they felt they didn't need more time. This committee did. Um, and it is to, it, I think it was actually to protect the sovereignty 
that we took the decision so on Article so 24. And had we it. not been a player in that, and if we had not been a voter in that, then there was a, a real danger that we would be in a position whereby we could not make any further, um, introduce any further measures um, or indeed legislation had we so chosen on, for example, standardised packaging. So, you haven't answered the question actually, you, stood, you didn't answer the question about losing the director because what you, you, you have not, you appear not to have accepted that the director would run on and it may have come into another presidency but would still been there, it would have been... I didn't uh, say I didn't accept that Mr Connerty, I said that we took the view that we wanted this, this matter to be resolved, I'm forgive me. I'm only using your own words, you said in your first answer you would, did not wish to lose the director. Have we agreed now that the director would still have run on and would have come, come into the next presidency, the present presidency and continued on? And the second thing is you took a decision, and it seems you said you took it yourself. No, that, I, that, I that talked you, to people. That you would over, overrule the right of Parliament so you could advantage your government in some way if you want to bring in legislation on, on packaging of cigarettes. That, Forgive that's what you're me, saying to I, us. I, didn't, I didn't actually um, take. Uh, first of all, I didn't make a decision without talking extensively to my team that accompanied me to Luxembourg, and I'm grateful for the advice that they gave me. Civil I bear the responsibility. Servants. Pardon? Civil servants, you mean? Yes. yes but civil servants are not accountable to us as No, I didn't say that they were, but you said you took the decision yourself. I took advice. I take full responsibility for the decision I made because I obviously was the ultimate person. The buck stops with me. Uh, and I, I had no difficulty because I took the very firm view. We, this, this, not just this government. Any government did not want to be in a position whereby its hands were tied by a directive which would preclude it from taking more action should it so choose on standardised packaging or indeed the amount of label, what, health what labels was, and other matters on tobacco. Mm, what, what was Akrev's view? What was Akrev, the officials who are representative? Uh, Mr Cash, um, their view with relation to... Well, just a little question. I mean, were you receiving advice? I mean, we just heard that the decision was taken by officials. Uh, no, I took the decision. No, wait a minute. Sorry. The, the, it was taken in the light of advice from officials. <laughs> it was also, uh, you may know, uh, something that's of interest to us because we're doing a, a European scrutiny inquiry into European scrutiny. And part of that uh, has raised the question of the role of the United Kingdom representatives were the people who do the negotiations as between member states, and they always get involved in all these matters. So I would be astonished to hear that that rep had not expressed a view, and I'd like to know what it was. Um, I, I might provide uh, some, some, some further explanation, Mr Cash, on that question. Certainly APREP were have been closely involved through the process of, of, of this whole dossier. Um, the Minister at, at EPSCO was accompanied by the Deputy Permanent Representative uh, in Brussels and, uh, and, and received advice um, on, um, on handling uh, the, uh, this, this particular dossier at EPSCO um, on, the, uh, on, on the day in June. The, the specific advice, I'm I, I not really able to recall um, what, what specific advice was, was provided. Um, but of course the Minister had uh, to, to look at the, the, the wide range of, of issues um, and, and take a, a balanced judgement on, on a course of action um, to, to move forward with. Um, and, and certainly the, the, the range of factors were, were put in front of, of, of the Minister um, and the Minister took the, uh, the decision that she did. But she was effectively told by them that the uh, circumstances in which all this was going on required her taking the action that she eventually took. I don't think I don't think officials tell ministers to do anything, Mr. Well, Cash. They, I, I, I can assure you that's the role that of the is, civil that servant. That is almost a matter of opinion, actually. But <laughs> can, can I? Can I? Have you ever watched Yes Minister? <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can I say, Mr. Cash? I think you and I, um, over the three years that we've known each other, may take the view that. Well, I take the view that you're a man of, of, of your own mind. And I might hope that you take the view that I'm a woman of my own mind as well. Uh, and I absolutely, and obviously I listened to the, to the advice, but can I tell you what I really listened to? And that was, if you like, the way that the votes were stacking up um, and which nations were going in which direction. Which would know about. Pardon? Which Akrep would know about. Well, can I also say that whilst I haven't been to many of these meetings, I have formed a relationship with a number of the key ministers. So I knew, for example, the attitude of the polls because 
I've spoken to the Polish health minister. And I knew the attitude of the Spanish minister, who actually with Spain was critical in this final decision, and indeed um, the Germans. And so, whilst yes, we, we could talk about, um, and I would listen to my officials, but I also had first-hand knowledge. I, I understood what, was, what I believed to be going on, and my view concurred with their view, that this was critical, and I'm, I, I make no apology for it. I, I took the view... Well, that's what worries me. You make no apology for it. You, you, you ignored so, Parliament. You no, ignored no, I, so, it as sorry, I make no apology, sir. For, for making a decision. I apologise at the outset... Excuse me. I apologise at the outset to, to, to this questions. committee... You're the one in error, not me. Yes, I, I apologise at the outset to the committee that, it was, it, that things had happened in the way that they had done, and I wish that the committee had been in a position whereby that they could have given, have given me a well, waiver. So it's our fault? No, I never... Well, that's the, this is what you're doing. You're spinning it as if we should have given you permission when we said you didn't have permission. You no, did you not couldn't have the give. You said you raised. I don't know you why you decided not to. I don't know why you're being so aggressive when I'm trying because to explain asked you things. Because you ignored this committee's scrutiny reserve. That's a, when I was chairing this committee and it was Labour ministers sitting there. They got the same treatment. The most important thing is Parliament's decision, not not the minister's whim. No, Parliament's decision. But it wasn't a whim, and I find that offensive. Um, I, it wasn't a whim. Analysis, it was. Sir. It was carefully thought out, and of course I considered the consequences, because with respect, Mr Collins, I'm not stupid. So I knew that I would be brought before this committee, and I would have to account for myself. And frankly, I could have taken the easier option, couldn't I? And I could have said, oh, well, if it hasn't, the committee hadn't, unfortunately hasn't had the time to give the waiver. I tell you what, I'll butt out of this, and I'll abstain. Now, that is perhaps what you would want me to do, Mr Connerty, but I took the decision. Yes, I it was in the interests on in two levels. I, I I believe that um, I believe in, in making all provision that we can um, on tobacco to protect the public's health when it comes to that. That is my, my view, and I believe it's my government's view as well. Um, and in the situation which we were in, article, the Article 24, which actually Mr Connolly would have meant that we would have, as a government, be it this government or some subsequent government, less control, less ability to determine our own policy, I would have thought you would have commended us for doing all that we could to ensure greater sovereignty for this Parliament. It's not the issue, with your, with, with your permission, it's not the issue about whether I support or not support what has gone through. As I said, it, it would not have been lost. This directive has been a long time coming. It may have come in the next uh, presidency. But if it's the right thing to do, it would have been done. So it's a question of overruling at this particular time. Not the content of it, but the fact that you as a minister... It's a principle. You, you, you thought it was best, best to cast a vote in a particular way, regardless of Parliament not being happy that we had full information to make that decision. Well, and, yes. having, and having done so... The, the option was that it could have come on to another presidency or it could have been carried by other members' votes without your participation. It would not have been lost, but you ignored Parliament, and that's the problem. The scrutiny reserve stands there for a purpose. It's, to allow, it's, allowed, it's not about Europe, it's about scrutinising our government. And you denied us that position. Well, I don't think I denied it with, with great respect, Mr. Cook. We didn't deny it. I accept that it wasn't as quickly as, it, as we might have liked, but you were not denied. No, you were not denied. Te I'm sorry, you were not denied. That would have been a much well, more serious matter. I think we're now matter. going to move on to Stephen Phillips, but um, there are matters which we've yet to consider. Uh, Philip, Stephen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to actually follow up a little on those points, but I want to see what we can agree on. Uh, you agree that this was your decision to override scrutiny and you take full responsibility for it? Yes. Uh, and before you uh, took that decision, you took advice from your officials, is that yes, correct? Yes, and I thought about it long and hard, Mr Phillips. <coughs> uh, I'm sure you did. Uh, you also agree, as I understand it, with Mr Connerty, that if you hadn't, if the uh, draft directive hadn't been dealt with at that stage, it would have continued over to the Lithuanian presidency, yes? I don't think, if I may say, I don't think it's as simple as that. Well, um, th th this, was, this was an important moment for, well, for let us. It, let us come back to why you believe a decision needed to be taken at that stage. Good, because I'd As like to. As a matter of procedure, if no decision had been taken at that stage, the draft directive would be carried over to the, Europe, to the Lithuanian presidency, yes? Well, I, 
Mr. Phillips, if I may, I, I, I think that um, it wasn't a case of a, a decision being made or a decision being referred to a, another time. I mean, the, the Irish presidency uh, put the, the issue on the agenda and, uh, and, and, and drove forward with, with the discussion. And I think it was a, a matter for, for the minister to either uh, be, uh, take a, a proactive part of you know, within want those to discussions. You, but I actually back. asked a different question. Would it have gone I don't mind point? whether you or the Minister answer, but as a matter of procedure, the draft directive would have been carried over to the Lithuanian Presidency. If they picked is, it up. That is right, isn't it? Well, I, I, yes, I, if they picked, picked it up. up. Yeah. It, but it would be a matter for the Lithuanian In order, the therefore, presidency. Minister, to justify the decision to override scrutiny, you must demonstrate, must you not, that it was important to take a position at the time that you did take a position without abstaining. Can we agree on that? Yes, I didn't want to abstain. And you have given two reasons, as I understand it, why you did take a position. Firstly, you believed it was in the interests of the, of the government and of the United Kingdom to take all measures to deal with uh, tobacco. Absolutely right. And secondly, you wanted to preserve the position under Article 24 as it stood in the government. Absolutely right. Now, what indications had you had from UPREP or any of your advisers that either of those matters which led you to the view that you needed to take a decision at that stage would have shifted if the directive had carried over to the Lithuanian presidency? I, I took the view, A, I didn't think it would go over. To the, I thought now was the moment. It, and that wasn't just my view. It was also obviously the view of my officials. And it was, the, it was the view of all the ministers that I had had the opportunity to speak to. We were of the view that now was the moment. Why? Because we did not believe that it would be taken over by the Lithuanians. We thought that the Irish had taken such a strong lead on it, that this was the moment when the nettle needed to be seized. And if, if we needed to, if it had gone over, I, I don't think there was ever suggestions that the Lithuanians would have wanted to take it up. Now was the moment. Um, the, the Lords um, had given their waiver. This committee had not had, said it hadn't had the time to do it. I was very concerned about Article 24 and I was very concerned about the need for a directive that would, <coughs> which would have an effect on tobacco and for the protection of this nation's public health on, on tobacco. Right. Uh, and I have no difficulty at all, Mr Phillips, with that because I happen to take that as a very serious uh, matter. And when you looked at the terms of the directives and the, the effect that it would have, 65% of a cigarette package across the EU bearing health warnings. Um, well, and at that for stage, example, in fact, it was 70%, wasn't it? No, it was negotiated down to 65 Well, in fact, when you wrote to this committee on June the 11th, right. and yep. this was supposedly so important, it was 70% down from 75%. No, because we negotiated. I mean, the, ne the negotiations were going on on that very morning. In fact, we sat late. We went through lunch so that we could, we could get a directive out with as much support as we possibly could. And we did that because as individual ministers representing our countries, we took the view that it was important that we formed and we had an agreement on such, such a serious public health matter. Right, but if it's, let's just, I want to try and chase this one That's down. Fair fair if it's such a serious public health matter, and you've made it clear that you consider that to be the position, the Commission's original proposal was 75% of the surface area. Uh, combined health warming and smoke uh, and, uh, uh, and pictures and text. That was then reduced to 70%. You then go off to Brussels, override scrutiny, and in fact write to the committee the following week and tell us that it's 65%. But this doesn't really tally very well with your suggestion that you have to agree everything because you're so concerned about public health in the United Kingdom's position with regard to smoking. No, Mr Phillips, I think it absolutely proves the point that I was making. Well, so was a, a smaller 65% health warning is better than the 70% no, that was on the No, no, it right? was about reaching as it was about reaching agreement amongst member states the maximum agreement that we could and as a res and in order to do that there had to be a series of negotiations for right. example there was a negotiation that um, went on about the um, addition of flavourings into tobacco uh, and there are a number of member states who made speeches about menthol cigarettes and the fact that in their particular countries 
Um, menthol cigarettes uh, were particularly popular. There were other men. Uh, the Swedes, for example, were very concerned about a tobacco problem uh, product called snooze. So right up to the last moment, genuinely, people were making speeches which others were listening to, including myself, that had an impact on how we then proceeded. Because around the table, the majority of people wanted us to reach a conclusion that very day. And I accept you could say, oh, well, it could all have gone over to another time. It, the, 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 the advice I received, which I absolutely believe to be correct from my own takings around the table from other ministers and because I trust the advice that I was being given, was that if we did not do it that day, there was every chance that it would just go away, if I may say, Mr Phillips, yet again. And some of us believe that these sorts of public health measures are very important. Yes, this, this committee may believe it as well. Give me this, yes. Sorry? So the committee members have no, no, I'm so sorry. I, I, no, right. I, 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 want, I, want, if I, I want, if I may, Minister, to move on. You've um, effectively you've done very well in explaining why you felt the need to take a decision uh, when you did. Uh, of course, the um, draft directive had been deposited, as I understand it, by the Commission in December of 2012. Is that right? I believe it's right, yeah. And you wrote with it to this committee in January of 2013. I believe that's right. If it's not Mr. And then Rankin's there is no correspondence at all. <coughs> from you or the department until June of 2013, despite this committee having uh, raised a series of questions, <coughs> sorry Minister, despite no. this committee having raised a series of questions in a report to the House, uh, and um, despite the fact that you must have known that matters were progressing at the various councils that were taking place. Is that right? I, think it's, I, I don't think it's as simple as that. Uh, Mr Phillips, I... The, the, the point that, um, that, that I would want to make is that there were delays, and we, we, we can see that, and we apologise for the, for the delays. Um, but this, as you say, um, or as you, as, you, as, you, as you said earlier, has been a very fast-moving dossier. In fact, um, I didn't say that. The Minister uh, said it. Oh, I beg your, I beg your pardon. Oh, it was, I beg your pardon. It was said earlier. Uh, that it's been a, a fast-moving dossier, and that's, uh, that's absolutely she the case. She said it was quite, events were moving pretty fast, and she subsequently said events were moving quite swiftly, and I'm coming back uh, to that. Yes, and, um, and we were in a position where we needed to, to settle on uh, the government's policy with respect to a, a wide range of matters within the, the, the dossier, and that took time. That took time uh, in terms of the negotiations with other government departments, and that's regrettable uh, well, that we were only able to come to you. not really matter for you. Let's deal with the negotiations with other government departments. Why did the right round take so long that this committee heard nothing for six months after it had reported? I, there, were, there were two matters that were happening. One is that the medical, um, the MHRA, health regulation, medical designing. Medicine and Healthcare Regulatory yeah. Authority. Health yeah. Products, right? yeah. We're looking, uh, along with the department, at e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes. And there was a debate that was going on as to whether or not they should be registered medicinal products. And it's, uh, I mean, and it's a genuine debate. Right. That was going on, uh, and that was, that was potentially part of the directive at one time, I believe that's right. That's right. Yeah. So there was all of that. In fact, I think in the end it, it fell out of the directive. I'll let you come back to your second. I think in the end it, it fell out of the directive. I'll let you completely. come back to your second. I think in the end it, it fell out of the directive. I'll let you completely. come back to your second one. But let's just. Sorry, that. you did ask me this question. I'm very keen to. The, the second thing that. The question of whether or not the United Kingdom Parliament is in a position to find that there is a policy which it has to accept and to implement into legislation through Section 2 of the European Communities Act is dependent upon that decision. The reason for our scrutiny process, I'm sure I don't have to explain to you, is to ensure that no decision is taken in the Council of Ministers until that debate has taken place. That is the fundamental question. What you did was to effectively prevent any such debate taking place at the time, although we've made it clear there will be a debate because we're not going to leave this alone. Uh, James, do you have a further point to make? Uh, well, I, I, we, we've, we've received representations, I think, from the leader of the Conservatives in the European Parliament about the question of e-cigarettes. I have got one particular constituent who has an important interest in e-cigarettes. Yes. And obviously this, this directive was dealing with e-cigarettes. It means they haven't had a chance to debate no, it and examine it. Come out. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in containing folks' yeah. regulation, isn't it? Yes. No, so. forgive me, Mr. Clapson. Um, I, I fully accept all this, uh, but I take responsibility. I'm not going to pretend that I, you know, I just did what my officials said, because I don't think that's... Because it wasn't like that in any event. I, I did make a decision. I made a decision. I was content for us to do what we did. Uh, I apologise profusely to the committee that things weren't done in the way that they should have been done, the notice given and so on and so forth. But when it, it, when it came to it, we, we just... It, if we had not made a decision, there was the, the danger of Article 24, but there was a danger that we, the moment would be gone, would be lost, and would be lost for a very long time. No. Safer6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out. And we're back live. Sorry, that's the tooth cavity. Um, we've, we've just sat and watched that here, and I've edited it down. It runs for 57 minutes, and I will, I think, find a way of posting that so everybody can see it. We need to share that with absolutely everybody, I think, and I'm, I'll do the closing up we can on David bit, I think. Um, that, to me, shows a minister who was in charge of our health here in the UK being completely, totally and utterly incompetent. Keith, you, you were saying that she was uh, pretty quick on her feet, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you ignore the subject and looked at it as, as, a, as a pure political scenario, I mean, normally on the news you just get snippets of select committee uh, meetings, but that, from a point of view of politics, that that was fascinating. Wasn't it just um, ignoring the subject matter? I mean, the the link up between her and our civil servant. Um, to 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 watch that was was very interesting. But at the end of the day, um, you know. She shouldn't have done what she did. Well, what I find particularly annoying, fantastically galling, is the fact that we picked this up on December the 19th. Yes. And we reported it, I think, on it was either the 19th or the 20th. And we've been following it assiduously. All right, we've got a vested interest in it, I suppose, because we all use ASICs. She wrote to the committee to let them know what was going on in January and then gave them no further information until June. Now, I know for a certain fact there's 156 people online at the minute that will have written to MPs and told mm. them that we weren't happy with what was being proposed and told them that it didn't work. And they wanted to debate it. You've heard what Mark pausey has been doing and he did it again today in the adjournment debate. They're looking for a debate and that woman, Anna Soubry, has denied 
our parliament, our parliament, our representatives, she of her own butt denied them the opportunity to debate what was going on. Now, if you're watching this on video on demand, you'll have missed what's been said in chat. I'm here to tell you I've been watching that going through and I can tell you now, there's 156 people in chat are really not very happy with Anna Sobri. And one or two are saying, well, what do we do? Well, here's what you do. You know where the video is. Uh, we've got it up already, I believe, on our Facebook page. We're going to be putting links to it everywhere. It's on Dick Puddle Court. Go and read it on Dick Puddle Court. And point your MP at it and tell them you ain't happy. Point your MP at it and tell them you ain't happy. And Anna Subri's on Twitter. She posted up earlier on that she was going to be at a drop-in centre today. I hope some of our viewers went and saw her and let her know that we're not very happy with her. This has got to be taken to the very highest levels, I think. We need to get this out into every newspaper. Why the hell the press hasn't been all over it today, I do not know. Hopefully they will be tomorrow. We, she, we, we need to be pointing everybody. As uh, Charlie Va Charlie's Vapes has just said in chat, millions of lives are at stake. And how the woman has got the brass neck to sit in that committee and tell them that she thinks e cigs Article 18, has dropped out of the Tobacco Products Directive. How she's got the brass neck to do that, I don't know. How can you not know that it's in there? This woman's responsible for our health and well-being. That's, she's the bloody reason I've just had a quote for 770 quid to get me teeth sorted out. Two fillings and three visits. Talking about which, before I... Yes, before I lose the plot altogether and <laughs> bleed over everybody... I want to say a great big thank you to everybody for all the good wishes and well wishes that I've had over the last few days. And I want to say a massive big thank you to Gary Dibley and Sav for standing in and putting the show out that they did last night. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's, it's, I, I, I was filling up a bit with it, I've got to be honest. Um, it, it's been cracking. Um, yeah, somebody saying, Winter Rogue is saying mainstream TV has been very quiet on anything to do with tobacco products directive, unless, of course, it's allegation of uh, sleaze with this Aussie. Why is it always the Australians that get involved with all of this? Well, that got uh, quite a bit on the on the news last night, didn't it? it? Did I? And the and Radio <coughs> Force covered it as well. Um, but yeah, we we need we really do need to make our voices heard. We really do need to be getting onto MPs um, and letting them know this is going on and letting them know they've been denied the opportunity to represent us the way they would you want see, to. I, th I think. Bill Cash and particularly that Scottish guy really went for the jugular, didn't they? It's a pity they didn't manage to split it all uh, together. I think I've got to say. Um, but there you go. Um, that's that's kind of where that all is. I'm going to take a, a quick break because uh, I need to refill my glass. And then, right. old son, um, we're going to be talking about the pro vape. All oh, right, yes. Because yes. you can hear the voices starting to go a little uh, bit. Now. Yes. Yeah. So we'll take a quick two minute break. And when we get back, Keith's going to talk about the pro tank um, a bit with assistance. It'll all be good. Back in two ticks.
and we're back. Um, now, Keith Pro Tank. Yes. Gave you that a few days ago. Yes. Um, and we've, I've just seen there's a Pro <laughs> Pro Tank Two due out in the next couple of weeks. But what do you make of the one you've got? Because it's it's bigger than what you usually use, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know how I wax lyri lyrical about the the the, the EVOD. And your EVOD hasn't blown up on you, but yours is yeah. one of the safe ones. The yes. uh, the pink one, that's been recalled. Just so everybody right. knows, check your EVOD, um, check with your supplier, and I'll just go there, check with your supplier, make sure right. that your EVOD is in fact up to scratch. They'll know the batch that you bought it from, but EVODs have been recalled, and it's going to be an FOC recall, so... Just so that you're aware back to the pro tank right i mean that 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 to me has has, has really transformed the experience um I, I mean it fits beautifully on there with mm -hmm. the with the sleeve uh the tank is a decent capacity uh the draw is wonderfully easy the vapor production it's got everything going for it very pleased with it. Goodly Gooding then. Right, I'll tell you what. Um, chat's been quite uh, quite busy and I'm going to go back to it. Uh, Winter Rogue's asking before we go there, why have AVODs been recalled? Apparently there's a chance they could blow up under charge. There was a dodgy uh, set of batteries that went to Kanga. Kanga has identified the problem and has issued a recall. That easy. Um, and this just goes to prove by the way, that the safety procedures that are in place work. Seriously, if there are any MEPs, MPs or ants watching, this proves that the kind of regulation that we currently have in the UK works. A problem is identified, a recall is issued, end of problem. It's what's been happening in the car industry for a, many, a great many years. But... There is talk in chat. Oh, the atties are fine. Rob Marsh has asked, are the atties okay? Yeah, the atties are fine. They're not going to do any damage. Just the battery in the battery part of the EVO. So is it just the pink ones? I um, it's not the stainless steel ones, apparently. But there are various different colours that were in this batch that got right, done. Right, so Yellow, it, it's coloured ones. Right. Yeah, coloured ones. I think the stainless steel ones are okay. But please, if you've got an EVO kit, not, not just the, the atomizer, if you've got an EVO kit, check with your supplier they will know and they will know properly fully by tomorrow so check with your supplier just just be sure just be safe just be safe better safe than sorry if they've been recalled that's all good right now in terms of what's been going on in parliament and i do apologize for the fact i haven't been around but seriously you wouldn't have wanted it to be me in terms of what's been going on we don't have a lot of time. The UK Parliament went on holiday tonight. Mm. They finish on a Thursday. It's what we know in the North East as a sharp lows. Um, they've had their sharp lows and they're away. That's it. They're away for the summer. And they come back around about 31st of August is when it, when it happens, I believe. Now, I know that France and Italy have got big protests organised around about the 31st of August. And I'm thinking we need to be doing something quite similar ourselves. And I saw, I did say in chat that Daz was talking about getting down to Parliament and doing something around about those dates. We had hoped Chris Davis was working on getting the plenary vote moved back into October. Unfortunately, that's not going to occur. The plenary will now vote on the 10th. They'll debate it on the 9th and they'll vote on the 10th of September. That means we're going to have to work quite quickly. We've basically got nine days in September in order to make our voices heard. Now, I'm going to be beavering away behind the scenes. I'm talking to all kinds of people to try and get something sorted out. But I'm thinking we need to get out to London. As many of us as possibly can get out to London. If we do the black balloons thing again or something else, whatever, we need to get out and get that done. And I'm going to be trying to get that sorted before the 1st of August so that we've got something to tell you now on the 31st of july vt talk whatever we've got sorted out and planned i'll let everybody know what it is then um and let's get down there let's get the scrutiny committee 
on site. So we need to be emailing MPs, whether they're on holiday or not, and writing to them, do whatever it is we can do, and hope that we can get some kind of debate going in Parliament where maybe the MHRA can be told to wind its neck in, where we can instruct the Council of Ministers when they go back to kind of think again uh, and reject the TPD in, in its entirety, preferably. Um, but certainly Article 18 makes sure it's right. If Anna Subri thinks it's been dropped, let's get it dropped. Let's do that. Um, Funny Trickster's asking what date it would fall on, and quite honestly, without a hard account at the hand, I, I cannot really tell you. But normally the plenaries happen on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I believe, uh, in the European Parliament. If, if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. That's where all the information is being passed around and it's immediate and it gets fed to you. You can follow hashtags, you can follow specific people like Clive Bates, Jerry Stimson, Paddy Costall, um, Dick Puddlecourt, who, who's very, very quick with stuff, um, and, and Chris Snowden and a whole load of other folks. If you've got, you know, you just need 20 or 30 people to follow to find out what's going on. Um, there's some brilliant information on there that you can get your hands on and I think really everybody it's it's well worthwhile doing even if you've never used it before get onto Twitter and get it all going on um, yeah there we go 10th of September is a Tuesday so they the debated on the Monday and then they vote on Tuesday the 10th of September now there are also I believe moves afoot to do kind of a, a another big thing and I'm going to be talking to these people tomorrow um, that would probably happen in Strasbourg on the 9th, Monday the 9th. Now, my understanding is that the plenary will happen in Strasbourg, not in Brussels. So I know it's 10 hours to get there um, from uh, London terminals. Again, if we can get something coming off with that, we need to make our voices heard as loudly as possible. So here's what I want you to do. You've seen what's been going on with Subri. Get hold of all your local press and make sure they know that that's been going on. If it hits the locals first, it'll get the national second. And we're talk I'm, I'm, I've been pointing the bee at it and God knows what else. Let's just see if we can get somewhere with all of this. Um, right, Tasmaniac66 has just said French vapors prepare a demo in Strasbourg. So that's good. That's good. Um, we, we need... Listen, everybody that's got contact with French, German, Italian, Spanish, everybody, let's, we need to do this as the whole of Europe. It's, it's not just the UK, it's the whole of Europe. Let's get everybody together and, and, and do it. Just do it. Whatever needs doing, let's do it. So I'm, I'm losing the voice here a little bit, Katie. Are you well and truly reading going on? I, I should tell everybody that's watching video on demand at the minute, the chat is plotting and planning all over the place they are getting their heads together and they're really certainly there's some enthusiasm coming across there isn't there? absolutely i've said it before and i'll say it again we've got the best chat in the country these these guys and girls know what they're doing and it's really good um dave can i interrupt a moment you can my dear we are trying as we speak now to get um the meeting video from uh, Anna Subri embedded onto the forum right and also with a bit of luck I should have it embedded on the Hayes Hour page for this show great so if you can't manage the forums get onto our website and hopefully you'll be able to see the entire thing there there you go that'll be the full 57 minutes thanks for that Chris I'm seeing from the, the German yeah, yeah the German vehicles yeah. are preparing two demos one will take place in Berlin and the other in Dusseldorf on the 31st of August. So that's France, Italy and Germany are doing things on the 31st of August. We need to do it. We need to get something together and do something on the 31st of August. Um, yeah, that, that'll, be, um, that'll be the thing to do. That'll be the thing to do. Um, it's great. Look, Chris, do you mind if I finish early? I'm Wilton here. No problem at all, Dave. It's nearly time anyway. Oh, you do. Six minutes. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I can push it to the end. Yeah. The voice is just about Wait gone. Um, again, can I say thank you to everybody for tuning in. Thank you to everybody for your good wishes. Another big thanks uh, 
to Gary Dibley and Lewis for, for and, and Sav for putting the show out last night. It, 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 I'm so proud to be part of this team, it's amazing. Um, and I'm so proud to be part of the community that's been pulling together so well over all of this. And I know we'll pull together immensely well over the days and weeks to come. For me, failure is not an option. But if I'm going to fail, I'm going to go down fighting. Um, it's been lovely spending this last 55, 56 minutes with you. Um, thank you all for well, tuning in. There's loads in. of good wishes coming across there. Oh, look at all that. Look at all that. That is brilliant. People, thank you. Just thank you. I, I, that, that's really all I can say. We'll go. Yes. We'll have go. Have an early night. Say good night, boys. Good, good night, night, boys. Good night. <laughs> See you next time. Take care. Bye.